Hey everybody, this is Ken the Media Guy here at the Veterans History Museum of the Carolinas. And uh, tonight we're having another night at the museum because, you know, there's this little thing called a pandemic going around and we're not open right now, but we wanted to keep the interest up. We wanted to, to, to do sort of like these, these virtual tours and show you some of the stuff that we have right here that, that it's just so cool. So I'm here with Curator. Emmett Cassiato. And Curator. Tom Bugala. And we're, what are we going to talk about tonight, Emmett? Okay, we're going to talk about the, the famous, the war horse of World War I, the 1917. And um, it shoots a .30-06. And odd six, a lot of people don't know. They think that's some kind of calibration. But anyway, that was the year that the bullet was invented. It was 06. Oh. Adopted by the Army. Yep, adopted by the Army in 06. Yep. Oh, okay. Anyway, this right here, and this rifle here is very distinctive. The rear sight is very distinctive. You could pick it out. Matter of fact, we were just talking on the last thing about the uh, Lost Battalion, and their men, all of uh, Willis's men, were using the 1917. And it made me feel good because, you know, s seeing something that we have in a museum, actually in a movie, being uh, a, a true movie, you know, based on fact that, that our, this, this rifle was in it. But anyway, there was three manufacturers that actually made this particular weapon. Uh, Eddie Stone out of Pennsylvania. Matter of fact, well, let's start over. They have 2.3 million of these rifles. A lot of people think the 03 Springfield was the icon, but this, it was, this, was, the, this was the workhorse of uh, World War I. Matter of fact, the British, a lot of people call them the Enfield too because we were making these for the Brits uh, to house a 303 shell. But anyway, um, once we entered, we retooled three factories, which was Eddie Stone out of Pennsylvania, Remington, which this model is, and also uh, Winchester, which is probably the highly sought after uh, of the 1917s. The, um, which one is that then? This here is a Remington. Okay. So we're right in the middle here. Mm -hmm. And um, what happened is uh, they made 1.3 million of these Eddie Stone, but they had some metallurgic problem here in the breach and everything here. It cracked a little bit, but after so many, there was like, I don't know, a few thousand of them. Then finally they corrected it and then it was fine after that. But anyway, they made 1.3 million. Remington made approximately about seven, 800,000 and Winchester made the fewest, which was around three or 400,000. But we actually, this was the workhorse. I don't know if you ever saw the movie, Sergeant York, Sergeant York actually used a model, the 1917 model, uh, like this. It wasn't the 03 Springfield. If you ever watched the movie, which we were talked about before, about the correct weaponry and so on, right. well, Sergeant York actually used an 03 Springfield, and he used a German Luger when he shot the six Germans. Well, in reality, he actually used a 45. Well. Gary Cooper could not handle the 45 recoil, so they put the Luger in its place so he can actually get six shots out without going all over the place. With the 9mm. With the 9mm. But this is the actual, this is one of the model that uh, the actual Sergeant York actually used. And he, that was at the Battle of the, uh, of the Buse Argonne, too, as well. What so about what the bayonet? The bayonet. Uh, there's a Winchester bayonet that goes along with this. Uh, well, we have a 1918 World War I. You can see how long the blade is. And uh, we, we, we could talk about another segment about the cut-down versions. But anyway, this would fit on. This would, the, the, all, our, all our weaponry, you could, eat, you could use it on the... Uh, you can use it on the 03 Springfield as well as the, and you can see how long it is. This one's a little old, a little rusty. I don't know whether I can get it on there or not. So what was the advantage of? Yeah, plenty of grease on it. <laughs> so there the, must have my been. Hands are greasy already. So what was the, with this particular <laughs> rifle, yeah, what was yeah. the upgrade over the 03? I mean, what, what, what made well, it a. The, well, 
they they we already had a fact factories are already going with they called it a P13 P14 pattern 13 pattern 14 right. they were they were already making these for the Brits so it was easy for our factories to switch over to a 30 odd six well let me tell you what an oath, a, a, a 303 shell is a pretty big shell too i mean that's not a small shell yeah and uh but it was real easy for our factories to retool and um and a lot of people still call these Enfields. Right. Pretty much all they had to do was uh, redo the chamber. And yeah, that's about the it. Barrel 303. Three, it's a 30, it's a 30 caliber. It's a 30 caliber. So barrel was yeah. probably nothing. They, they would just have to go in and remount uh, the chamber. And that would so be they it. literally had to come out with this rifle before they went overseas. Well, when we entered the war... In World War One, when Wilson declared war, April 6th, 1917, we had 200,000 men in our, in our army. Most of those were National Guard men and reservists. Mm -hmm. We only had maybe two full divisions of actual army, uh, you know, regulars. So the draft was instituted in May, the Selective Service Act. And um, they were asking men to come in ages from 21 to 30. Well, they weren't getting enough men to sign up. So in August of 17, they decided to amend it, go from 18 to 40. Well, believe it or not, they had over 24 million men sign up for the draft, which we only used about 4 million of those men. Um, and um, so when... Pershing went over to France, the England first. They thought the Americans were coming. He come off the train with two thousand men. They said, "What? What's this?" <laughs> and he told them straight out. He goes, "Hey, he goes, hey, it's going to take us a while to train these men." Well, the seventy seventh division was made up of mostly New Yorkers, which they didn't even have a camp. They went to Long Island, Camp Upton, and the soldiers that were drafted actually built the camp, trained in the camp, and then they went overseas. And see, what happened was... But that stuff is still there. Yes, yeah, exactly right. My brother goes out there every once in a while. Oh, is that right? Yeah. That's pretty neat. You know, the funny part about that is we, uh, the, the Brits and the French said, you don't have to train them, men. Bring them over here. We'll train them. Well, yeah, Wilson baptism and Pershing, by fire. Well, Wilson and Pershing had one nothing to do with that, you know? I mean, they won the, Pershing won the fight under the American flag, which we did. And because um, Wilson wasn't no dummy, he wanted a seat at the table, you know, at, at the end. Yeah. yeah, that's right. If you ever notice, at the peace table, he's sitting at the head of the table. And if you notice, the two Japanese, which are our allies of World War I, were sitting at the far right. And they were shunned the whole time. They never hardly got to talk or anything. And that's another one of the reasons why the, the tensions were high when they left there as well. Uh, but um, Took them 20 years. Yeah, but that was, that was, that was one of the things that uh, they were really upset about. But anyway, uh, that's a Treaty of Versailles. And, um, but, uh, so how does that go from the 03 Springfield to this rifle right here? Well... The Springfield Armory came up with a weapon that has a 30 odd six, which was a very good weapon, but they just didn't have the manufacturing power to make so many. These were already, our factories were already tool for the 303, okay, okay. which Tom just mentioned how easy it was to trans, to transform the, o, the 303 a cartridge to a 30 odd six. And that's how, that's how, why we have so many of these. But this was the workhorse. 75%, they, according to all the history books and, and, and the articles I've read about the 17, 75% of our men used this particular weapon when went over there in, uh, in France. And, but that's so they could all use the same yes. bullet. Yes, the 30-06 the here and the 03 Springfield, yes. And also, you know, uh, later on, we, uh, you know, we had the, you know, the Grand and so on, that was still you and the 03 A3. That cartridge stayed as our, yeah, our stable. service cartridge yeah. Yeah. all the way through Korea. Yep. Yeah. And now we and use a 5.56. Five, well, yeah, they, they 
went with the, the 308. 308. Yep. And they the M1, one, yeah. And then they went on with that. But you know. And they, now they have the 5.56. Five, yeah, no. the 5.56. Five, five, the five, five, There's the reason they like it. Yes. And uh, then aren't they coming up with a new pistol, too? Mm -hmm. The Army? Mm, well, they're, I think that it was um, Beret, not, uh, Beret, not Beretta, but uh, FN. Hey, that's it. FN won the competition for the new pistol, service pistol. Yep. So we'll see what happens. I think that's how we ended last episode, wasn't it? When did we start talking about the new pistols? We we like to cover 100 years in in one episode. So, <laughs> but I had the privilege of shooting this particular weapon too, boy. And I'm gonna tell you what, it's it's a pretty accurate weapon. Yeah, it's pretty neat. And a lot of guys brought these, sporterized them. Yes, <clears throat> they sporterized that. The K98s. Yeah. Yeah. And the uh, the, the Springfield too. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for this episode. So, everybody, I hope you're enjoying what we're talking about, and I hope you're enjoying the banter back and forth that we're having here. If you are, please, please, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just type in Veterans History Museum of the Carolinas up in the search bar. And then once you hit our channel, hit that big red button to subscribe, and you'll never have to look for us again because you'll get all the notifications in your email. So we're going to, be, we're going to keep on through this you know, this trying times and everything, we're going to keep on making videos, so stay tuned, all right?